no plans, no plans at all Evil man's always transcending Fight her like sheep, swallow everything Always simple tins or pretending We got no plans Welcome to the first ever Moment of Clarity video interview Since he's been such an important part of the Moment of Clarity In that he's supplied many, uh, much of the information that I've used in certain episodes Um... I figured it was uh, it was best that I talk first off to Greg Palace, to the New York Times best-selling author. He's uh, he's the author of several books, including Armed Madhouse, The Best Democracy Money Can Buy, Vulture's Picnic. He's also the man who uncovered how the 2000 election was stolen by George W. Bush. He's an investigative journalist in an age where investigative journalism has died, and that's why he's one of my heroes because. You turn on mainstream media and you see this, uh, this, this, this gaggle of bubbling idiots that think they don't need to actually find out anything. They just read their Twitter updates to a nation of fools. And Greg Palast is the polar opposite of that. He has a new book coming out in a few days called Billionaires and Ballot Bandits. So without further ado, I hope you enjoy the first ever live video Moment of Clarity interview, hopefully the first of many. Let me know what you think. So you got another new book, which you you, uh, you put out books like People Change Pants, I've noticed. Um, and I always wipe after. The new book is about uh, voter theft, vote theft, election theft. Um, summarize the entire book in uh, one minute. <laughs> <laughs> Here's what it is. Okay. They, we used to have a thing called democracy, but then we got some very rich guys who said that this is not good enough. It's not very profitable for them. So we have a couple of philanthropists named Charles and David Koch, or as the Justice Department calls them in the indictment, you've never seen until you read this book, which is buried, Target 67. These philanthropists is the best euphemism I've ever heard. For they're what, philanthropists. For what they are. Is they are philanthropists. <laughs> they have been giving to themselves for a very long time. So the Koch brothers have created a computer program called Themis. And uh, then there's another character named Carl Rove. He was the counselor to the president, Mr. Bush, who called him, by the way, Turd Blossom. And this little flower has a database called Data Trust. Now, if you take Themis from the Koch brothers and you put it with Data Trust from Turd Blossom, you get this database which would make the FBI green with envy. And it doesn't even have any of the pretend constitutional protections. And it's about every, it has information on every single American living and soon to be dead. So this database is then used to purge voter rolls, correct? There are nine ways that they screw you out of your vote. Purging is the first one, you know, like you've, you know, if you've ever had an enema or something like that. It's a similar thing, give an enema to the uh, registration rolls. And the way that they do this is that they do things like, for example, in 2000, I discovered that Catherine Harris purged the voter rolls of Florida of tens of thousands of black people by calling them felons. Now, they were criminals, it's true. They were caught voting while black. Of the 94,000 people on that list, exactly zero, zero were found to be criminal felons. But they lost their vote anyway, and you lost your president, the one that won the election. And so Bush became president. Now, since Catherine Harris, with Themis from the Koch brothers and Data Trust from Rove, you've got, it, it's like Harris had an Atari. Uh, this is a whole new level of being able to challenge voters in all 50 states. Because under a law drafted by Karl Rove for George Bush called the Help America Vote Act, and you know what happens when George Bush and Karl Rove decide to help you vote, um, they, they have empowered all secretaries of state, all 50 Catherine Harris's, to purge the voter rolls of so-called suspect voters. That's you! Only if you're Hispanic or um, African American or Native American or Jewish, in other words, bluish voters. Um, and they've been very good at this. 20, now, I get, take out a pencil. I want you to remember this number 22 million voters. 22 million voters have been purged in the last two years under the Help America Vote Act, including, for example, in the swing state of Colorado, one the in five Orwellian, voters. The Orwellian named Help America Vote Act. Help America right. Vote Act. And so now, for example, the Republican Secretary of State, uh, Donetta Davidson, who knocked off one in five voters in, in uh, Colorado, the swing state, um, 
Uh, you call her the Persian general because Bush rewarded her by making her head of the Elections Assistance Commission. The book is about all the nine ways, purging, digitizing, caging. That's another good one. That's, i got to tell you all about that later. But even more important, it's a story of the billionaires who are funding this, how they got their money from you. Uh, the Koch brothers, uh, the Paul the Vulture singer, Iceman Simmons, John Paulson. Now, for example, Paul the Vulture singer. Now, you've heard Lee in his moment of clarity, which is rare for any American. Um, in his moment of clarity, explain guys like Singer, who, who are repo men in the third world. They uh, grab the uh, supposedly debts of the third world, and they demand 50, 60 times the amount that they paid for these things or else. In fact, by the way, if you read Billionaires and Ballot Bands, you think they use the tactics they use on the Congo in Detroit. Paul Singer, the number one donor for Mitt Romney, and John Paulson, the snake, his partner, those two guys cranked the U.S. Treasury and TARP for $2.5 billion, which they personally put in their pockets, $2.5 billion out of the auto bailout. And remember, Romney said that the auto bailout was Obama's plan to enrich his cronies and donors. Yet the two biggest donors to the Romney campaign are the two guys who made out the big with the big time, two and a half billion dollars. And the way that they did it is that they grabbed GM by the ball bearings. What they did, and you'll find this in one of the chapters of Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, uh, they grabbed a hold of the auto parts division of GM, bought that out for 67 cents a share. Then they told the U.S. government, we'll sell it back if you give us enough money to sell it for $22 a share. They paid $0.67, cents and they demanded $22 a share, which cost the U.S. Treasury $12 billion. Now, why did they do that? Because they said, oh, if you, don't, if you don't give us every dime we demand, we're going to shut down the entire U.S. auto industry. Now, Chrysler, without those parts, could operate maybe three months. GM said it could operate maybe three hours. They got what they wanted. That's how the vulture works. And then he tithed off a bit of that to um, the Romney campaign. They have a super PAC called Restore Our Future, and uh, meaning restore their future. So and they're the guys who are putting up the money for data trust. These are the billionaires you will meet. Iceman Simmons, who's writing a check for $50 million. These aren't even Republicans, by the way, just so you know. Most of them are not registered Republicans because you're not, it's not about politics. They don't make political donations. They make political investments. Uh, I want to go back to the elections for one second. Uh, why the fuck do the Democrats always just fall over the second this shit happens? I mean, we feel like, it, it feels like Wisconsin was the test run for some of these new computer systems and the, the Wisconsin recall and it went swimmingly, you know, uh, I believe I got the number 96,000 students alone were knocked off uh, the voter rolls That's in the right. Wisconsin recall. And, uh, and so all, if all of these things had, gone, had, had not been done, there's a good chance Barrett would have won. Why do they all just jump up there and say, I concede? That's, that's it. I, oh, man, did I lose. See you later. Uh, Lee never took biology. So <laughs> de Democrats, just like any, 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 any jellyfish, it's, it's, you're, you, ha you have to ask, um, you know, why doesn't a jellyfish stand up? Because it has no spine. Now, the thing is, is that, in fact, one of the nine ways that you steal ballots uh, in uh, Billionaires and Ballot Bandits is called caging. The... A uh, way that that was done is that Karl Rove's operation had been sending out letters to, among other people, black soldiers, do not forward, so that when the letters came back into their so-called cage, the cage voters were challenged as fraudulent voters. Well, they weren't fraudulent. Uh, you know, where, why, why would a black soldier not be at home? Maybe he's in Afghanistan, yeah, he's Mr. Rove, yeah. uh, Mr. Turd Blossom. And the same with college students. They're and the same not, black college students away. Yeah. Um, and so they, they went after these guys, and the Democratic Party, if the Democratic Party found out about it. Now, Bobby Kennedy, who writes the introduction of the Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, he's a law professor. He said these guys should be in jail. This is a felony crime. Caging is a felony crime. It's against the law. You can't and pick out black And they accidentally sent their caging list to you, right? Oh, yeah, they sent it to me. Well, they sent it to <laughs> georgewbush.org, which happens to be owned by a friend of mine, John Wooden, 
who passed these things on to me. So I had Carl Rove's confidential emails, which is pretty funny, and they never denied it. It was, it was so we got the cold stone evidence. Why didn't the Democrats? Why didn't the Democrats demand that we throw these guys in jail? Why not? And that's one of the big questions. In fact, Kerry was asked that by a student in Florida who was holding up my book and said, here's a book and said, because of this caging business, you lost the President of the United States, Mr. Kerry. You should read this book. Why would you concede? And, and Kerry's answer while the kid was being tased and screaming, don't tase me, bro, was, oh, yeah, I read the book. It's by Greg Powell. It's a great book. And uh, he's, he's right about the election. But he never answered the question. Why didn't the jellyfish stand up? But I guess the answer is... He also didn't jump in the, in the way of the tasing. <laughs> right, <laughs> he yeah. didn't throw his body in front of that either. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, I guess he didn't want to be tased. Yeah, he didn't want to be tased. You know, I can't stand up for it. So, what's the number one thing people can do to have their vote count other than try their hardest not to be black? Um, okay, if you want to avoid the ballot box fisting, uh, go to ballotbandits.org, where it says... Seven ways to beat the ballot bandits. So the first thing is, don't go postal. Don't mail these bandits your ballot. For God's sake, they, they throw them away because they don't like the color of your envelope. I'm not kidding you about that. Well, this is a real case. They didn't like the weight of your envelope. You had the stamp upside down, okay? And and uh, for some reason, uh, you know, there was a, instead of camp, it was C-U-M-P. Um, as, and, I, as I said in my moment of clarity, a provisional ballot is also like writing your vote in a fart. Because you're just <laughs> it's left a, with it's a ballot It's a kind of smell. placebo ballot. So Nothing. don't take one of the pieces of advice. Don't take a, a provisional ballot. Don't vote provisionally. Uh, vote early. Don't wait for election day because actually then it's too late to if you're getting screwed to get the, the ballot condom. Uh, other things is, is don't, um, you know, when you vote, you're going to have to make this a whole... Um, movement. Don't vote alone. As uh, Jesse Jackson, one of the co-sponsors of Billionaires and Ballot Bandits, says, arrive at five when you vote. Uh, because uh, voting, like uh, love and bowling, should not be done alone. Now, there's also other things. Register to vote. You say, oh, I'm registered to vote. Greg Palast, I'm registered to vote because I voted before. Bullshit. Because, and, and, and my, I love Zach, who works with us, and he knows Zach. Okay, Zach, I, I love him. Zach Roberts. Zach Roberts, okay, and he works with us. And this, so this is his life. He shows up at the polling station. They said, you're not registered. You're an inactive voter. He said, inactive? I spend my life on this crap. I, I vote all the time. I vote for school bonds. I vote for PTA president. Shit, what do you mean I'm inactive? In other words, 22 million people have been knocked off the voter rolls because you're inactive, you're a felon. In Florida, if you're crazy, you're not allowed to vote unless you are a registered Republican. 22 million people have been knocked off. That means you. So check with your county board of elections. Are you registered right now? Find out how you're registered, under what name. Does it have a junior? Does it have a D in the, in the middle of the name? Make sure your ID's um, in shape with your picture and the correct address because they're looking for a way for you not to vote. All right, final question, uh, which I got a lot when I was uh, doing my Moments of Clarity about uh, that were based on your book. People say... All this shit's going on. There's there's, there's fucking thievery and, and criminals on both sides. Why vote? They they they. I keep getting these comments that say you only justify our system when you vote. This the you, you justify this corrupt system. You know what? Make them steal it. Make them <laughs> steal it. You know. I mean, if there's a rapist, you don't say, "Oh, you missed a hole." Um, if there is, a, you know, I mean, you don't do that. Okay, make them steal your vote. That, that's an this illegitimate is, rape. That's right, an illegitimate rape. Right, right. You know, and, and so what's happened is, is, is that, yeah, that's exactly what they want you to do. They want you to feel that you've been, that you've been so fucked right. that you don't want to do it anymore. Right. Well, you know, fuck back. When right. someone's fucking you, fuck back. And that's, that's a point. Make them steal it. You don't, when, if there's a burglar in the neighborhood, you don't put your jewelry outside the door and say, here you go. You don't hang your jewels outside the door. You don't do that. What you need to do is say, we're not going to put up with this. We're not going to put up with this, and we're going to demand the vote count. And even after the vote, you have to demand the vote count. I remember, you know, like in Peru, people went into the streets when the vote was stolen, and they got the president that they actually voted for. Uh, Milosevic was thrown out in Serbia because they stood up. The people, after the vote count was stolen, they got into the streets and said, count the votes. 
in Florida, we got the president that we voted for. Well, actually, we didn't because we went <laughs> home and, and, and um, said, where's the remote? Well, um, and, and, and Al Gore conceded. <laughs> and conceded, he conceded about conceded, a week before the election. Conceded and then had to be talked into unconceding. <laughs> you don't have to love me. You can hate me. But I want the goddamn votes to be counted. And I realize that if any party which nominates a brain-damaged vulture like Al Gore deserves every beating it should get. But... I still want the guy who got the most votes to win. I don't even care if, if uh, Romney wins as long as he wins the vote and not wins the Cajun game, not wins through purging or other registration role enemas. Uh, that's your job. And you may be discouraged. I mean, what the hell does that mean, discouraged? What do you mean you're fucking discouraged? There are people that were hung from fucking trees because they wanted the vote. Martin Luther King was shot in the fucking head. All you're asked to do is check your registration online. Pussy, do it. Tough words from Greg Palace. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. So there it was, Greg Palace. Hope you enjoyed it. And as another thank you to you guys, I'll be giving out uh, copies of a video that Greg Palace, the Greg Palace team created called Why We Occupy that includes a lot of cool stuff. I'll be giving out some free copies of that. Just uh, go on Twitter, at Lee Camp, to find out how to win. Um, also, if you become a member at any level at LeeCamp.net in order to keep Moment of Clarity going, uh, you know, $5 a month would be like 50 cents an episode or something, and uh, we can hopefully keep this thing going. Advertiser free. And if you become a member at any level, I'll give you a copy of either Why, uh, Why We Occupy, the Greg Palace video, or the new Occupy documentary made by Dennis Trainer Jr. called American Autumn. So check that out and keep fighting. Plans, no plans at all. Evil man's always transcending. Fight her like sheep, swallow everything. Always simple tins or pretending.